Hi, and good afternoon. It's Gene from Avstar Observatory. Welcome. Um, in this video, we're going to talk about what's been taking place over in the Philippines. It is reported uh, to have nearly killed 400 people whilst displacing 98,000 people uh, with the recent um, storm that has just passed through there. But, you know, I think there's a lot of things we can learn from this that haven't yet had to you know experience such uh, destruction and devastation and again you know just think about the operation now that that disaster response agency has in order to feed in those circumstances 98,000 people that have had to leave their homes their work their businesses and livelihood behind to take refuge somewhere and shelter this out you know this isn't going to be something that is recoverable for months and you know I say you know uh, many times you know how many of you at this moment have some provisions put up just in case you get caught up in an event like this I will say there's a lot of lessons that can be learned because you know what we are going to see first off are those vulnerable people not just in the Philippines China, like we have seen, Europe have suffering with all these floods, and you know, recently over the last few weeks in Canada, we're going to start seeing this happen all over our world. And the reason for that is, is because we have began in the last probably 300 years to settle in regions that should never have been settled in the first place. I'm talking not just about floodplains, because largely, you know, when you get villages which then become established towns and cities in a flood zone, and just because it never flooded in the last 300 years, doesn't mean it is likely not to in the forthcoming future. And things um, like, you know, what we are witnessing with the dramatic climate changing and the, you know, the return now to a glacial period on the back of grand solar minimum and a magnetic pole reversal should be enough to be that screaming wake up call for a lot of us. I keep saying this and you know I keep seeing it every day thousands and thousands of people displaced through floods and we know why that is now because of the magnetic poles on this planet are reversing. We haven't seen equilibrium yet. These things are going to continue to get worse. And therefore, for that reason, we are going to start to see more people in larger numbers than 98,000 people, you know, be affected. We saw even in some of our Western civilized countries over the last 18 months, the same happen to some pretty sophisticated uh, cities like Texas, you know, in that, that um, record breaking snowstorm that knocked out the grid and we all know what happens when the grid goes down but you know this is because you know we are not preparing for what we are facing no government at this point as far as I'm aware there is no evidence of any preparations for us returning back into this glacial period yet the government scientists from these organizations know exactly that we are why is that you know, we could see in the coming not too distant future, and like I said, we ain't talking 15, 20 years away. This is happening now, and the only reason why it hasn't happened to the likes of me and you yet is just pure luck. You know, there has been some dramatic climate changes on this planet, and it's just a matter of time before our luck runs out ourselves and we find ourselves in a similar situation to some of these dear people and you know we're talking even in some of the most advanced western countries that we're seeing it happen already so you know we are all vulnerable to this and we all live on this planet and you know this planet is gearing up to go into some severe changes in the not too distant future not that it is already uh, doing so because we are seeing the aftermaths of what what is um, happening in these disaster zones like the Philippines today. 98,000 people is not a small amount of people and 400 people sadly have lost their lives in this incident alone and those numbers could go up over the next few days. You know cities 
are not going to be sustainable in the future as we progress further into this glacial period. I just want to give you, uh, for instance, the last glacial period lasted 100,000 years. Man had only been on this planet in the Homo sapien form for the last 45,000 years. So man has never witnessed the most deepest depths of any glacial period. We are so heavily reliant on infrastructure, technology today, that makes us more vulnerable than when we had the last Carrington event, to put it in perspective. And, you know, yet we face the risks of that um, occurring at any given time. You know, we are delicately dangling on very, very thin pylons at this moment, and we could fall at any given time, any one of us. And, you know, we need to start thinking about, for, for some of us, relocating out of these dangerous zones. And, you know, you've only got to look at a little bit of, um, you know, uh, geography of where you live to see if some of the simplest things that you can spot are a possible threat for you, your family, your loved ones, and all your worldly, dearie, dearest possessions. You know, I want to help people. But if I can't lead the horse to the water to make it drink, then I'm going to struggle to do that. And on the back of everything else that is happening about, you know, um, our activity on YouTube in the way we are getting censored, um, you know, to the levels that you have seen at least yourselves over the last few weeks, it's going to be a very difficult task. I don't want to give up. You know, I want to help as many people as I possibly can. And, you know, you can help me do that by giving me a little bit of support for what we do at the observatory because we are monitoring actively these events with bespoke equipment that through, you know, the generosity of a few people, like over the last couple of days, that have pledged a little bit of support for us, we have managed to convert that into equipment. And, you know, with good people like Kendall, uh, Scott, and all the others uh, around, you know, the world that have got equipment for us at the moment, with the with the help that they have given us, it has given us a better opportunity to keep track on these events as they occur, because we are being terribly, terribly let down by the governments that proclaim to work for the benefit of ourselves, regardless of what country you're in today, um, you know. It is a very sad day for a lot of things, and to mention just one, for science in general. Especially when, you know, that science, ideas that are shared become censored because of their uh, sensitivity and nature of the topic. It's the world in which we're living in. But, you know, I just wanted to, you know, again, bring it home to you guys that, you know, we are only not in a situation like those Filipinos uh, simply because we have had up to this point a little bit more luck than what they have had um, over the last few days during that storm lie. So um, I'm going to quickly nip over before I end this video to Pole Shift News because I want to show you the latest data that has come from Canada which I think um, you know justifies us keeping our eye on it and that is why uh, it was a shared view with Kendall who supplies the data with us because uh, when you see there has been a slight drop in the magnetic intensity over Canada and for that reason Kendall has agreed to send us his data every fortnight now so we can monitor it. This is what we set up our little network of people with their magnetometers to you know watch out for this could be one of those events where we could see something dramatically happen now it's a pity that we don't have something in russia right now yet it will be my task next year to get equipment out into russia so that we can monitor the increasing intensity because as we have seen a decrease in canada i would suspect to see an increase in russia as Russia is what is winning the magnetic North Pole over um, to central Russia right now. And it's because of that intensity is increasing and Canada is decreasing. And where our magnetic North Pole is at the moment, which is caught up in between these two intensities, um, is the reason why we see it being pulled over towards Russia right now. Guys, I can't emphasize 
how important it is to support this observatory in a time where there is very little light on these subjects. And with that, I will mention the link down there in the description and just ask that a few more people step forward and support something more than worthwhile. We may have saved people's lives. We may have saved people's livelihoods. And we may have saved, you know, thousands and thousands of pounds for people already. I would like to think we have in the years that we've been doing this. And, you know, there is a lot more people we haven't yet been able to get in touch with simply because of our footprint is small. And, you know, we're always trying to do some more about that as well. So uh, with that, let's go over to Polshift News. So as you can see, uh, we're looking at the data sent by one of our superstars, Kendall, uh, who's got one of our magnetometers, which is monitoring the intensity in his region in Canada for us. Uh, you can see that there's two weeks worth of data being recorded as opposed to the usual month that we normally have. And at the beginning of the data, you see that the sine wave is unstable, that it goes um, you know, deeper in the trough and the peaks and then halfway through the month you can see there's a slight drop that would be one anomaly that I'd keep my eye on I'm also interested in to see what's been going on with why the sine wave has changed its its normal pattern but you can see that there's a drop and then it moves along then there's this significant drop now normally if it's just one incident where you've got one reading that's low like that you could put that down to you know other anomalies taking place but there's three or four in concession there that's happened during a recent change i think it's worth while keeping an eye on remember um canada is probably one of our most active regions of interest on the planet at the moment uh second would be russia but we don't have a magnetometer there yet but hopefully uh next year we can secure one of those uh, as well as Brazil and South Africa. And the reason why we want in Brazil and South Africa is to look at the uh, South Atlantic anomaly, which is the weakest field on our planet. And it would be really interesting to get one of our muon detectors down there as well, because uh, like our muon detector in Canada, picks up more uh, radiation with regards to muons than what we receive here in the UK. It's just short of half or around 40% more than what we get here in the UK. Um, I believe what we would see in Brazil is an even further decree, which means that the risk of cancer and more tropical storms in that region could be more likely to occur as a result of that directly. So that's the data from Canada. Um, uh, the data was only processed today. Uh, usually it's processed within the day or after day after of receiving it. So we've got already, I believe, another week's worth of data or thereabouts collected in Canada. And it'll be another week before we get some more to have a look at this um, activity that's been taking place over the last two weeks. Guys, I'll leave it there. Uh, there's a link down there if you want to help support us. Remember, we're proactive. We don't just talk about these subjects. We're doing something about it in order to monitor them. And it is for that reason that I say we use the scientific method in collecting the data and make our decisions based on that data. So there's a link down there if you want to help support us. Only other thing I'll say is, guys, you take care of your loved ones. Think about some of the things we've mentioned in this video. And I'll say what I usually do. Bye for now.